Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be explaining another backrooms level, shocker, it's almost like that's what I do here. Anyways, I'm going to be explaining level 84 of the backrooms, also known as the Shifting Hedge Maze. This level is a classic example of liminal horror done right, and I know y'all typically enjoy levels like this, so do I, who does in their right mind. Anyways, without further ado, let's just get into the explanation, shall we? Backrooms level 84 is the 85th level in the catalog of lore, and that rhymed, that's pretty funny. It has been given a classification of a class 3 difficulty due to its unsafe nature, medium entity count, but more importantly, its shifting nature. The level is constructed out of leafy hedges that somehow shift around while you explore the place. They're constantly moving, like a big Rubik's Cube. There are safe zones scattered throughout the level where nothing bad seems to happen. It's like it's immune to the shifting. I'll, I'll get into that in a second, but the main objective of this level is just surviving these shifting mazes. The level's general layout is that of a very expansive maze with very, very high leafy walls. The maze is not made of solid walls. Instead, large leaves and vines make up the entire thing. Even though they're not solid, you still cannot walk directly through them though because it just is too thick with weeds. The floor of the maze is some kind of hard packed material, like a gravelly dirt concrete mixture, and the paths seem to lead to strange places. Sometimes they'll just take you to dead ends, sometimes they'll take you to small living rooms with couches in the middle of the maze, and sometimes they'll take you to kitchens or offices or bedrooms in the middle of the maze. Now that's strange already, but there are also some other weird things that can happen. Like inside of these rooms, you could find furniture and beds and full on couches and stuff. It's, it's like someone lives there, but nobody's ever been seen. The maze doesn't just seem to be a simple maze though. It seems that it's sentient in nature. It seems like the entire level has a brain and it thinks and it acts for itself. And that's where the danger really, really comes in. Because walking through this maze, you get the feeling that it's moving to make it as hard as it can for you. Like, it's not making it easier. It, you can't get luckier because it always gets harder. The paths shift together and they tangle to become more and more confusing, and it's just really hard to escape. The good news is there are seemingly zones inside of the maze that are not affected by the shifting. These are large areas with concrete statues and patios and trees. They're known as safe zones. Finding a safe zone will allow you to relax for a while and rest your brain since it's been in overdrive trying to find the exit of the maze. But inside the safe zones, you might find also a random crate or a random spring with almond water in it to restock and resupply yourself. You also might find tools that can make traveling easier. The entire time you're in these safe zones, the maze will be shifting around you. So just watch out for that, man. Since the maze does shift, there's no one right way to complete it. And since that's the case, the only thing I can do is give you tips on how you can escape easier without being consumed or losing your mind. So my biggest tip is that if you have a compass, bring it with you to this level before you come here because it'll make it so much easier. You just gotta follow one direction, not the band, the actual direction, as far as you can go. And when the maze shifts around you and the paths change, you just go whichever way takes you the exact direction you are going. And on the other hand, if you do get sent to the maze with no compass, your odds of actually surviving become so low. Sorry. My advice if that happens is just to go from safe zone to safe zone and try to follow one direction. Maybe find the sun in the sky or the clouds in the sky and follow them. Keep your eyes peeled on things that don't move and follow them to the exits. Also, you might think, well, why can't I just climb to the top of the maze and look where I'm going? There's no point in trying to do that because this maze has a unique feature that doesn't allow people to climb up its walls. You can get about halfway up and then each person is filled with this overwhelming sense of fear. They're just so scared to keep going that they just fall back down to the ground. It's unknown why this happens, but it's assumed that the level might be hiding something above the maze or on the other side of the maze that it doesn't want you to see. Now the maze itself is not devoid of entities, which is a scary thing to think about because skin stealers are one of the most common problems here. They can walk through any safe zone, any maze, any wall. They seemingly have full run of the entire level. And it's not just skin stealers you gotta worry about either. It's smilers and hounds and that sort of thing walking around the mazes at all times. But it specifically, it gets worse at nighttime when the light in the sky goes away and the entities seem to come out in hordes. When nighttime does occur and you're, you're still stuck here, you might be screwed. Because the claustrophobic nature of the level makes encountering these entities even worse. 
since you'll have less room to run away from and no place to hide. If you're trapped in a hallway with a smiler, well, goodbye. There are no bases here since it's not feasible to put an outpost in a moving maze, and to enter this level, you can no-clip into some plants over on level 97, and you'll wake up here on level 84. To exit, you have to attempt to get through the maze and continue to find your way through it until so you get deep enough into it where things start to glitch and things start to warp a little bit more, and then you can no-clip through a wall that is glitching and warping. However, this will send you back to level 10, so do so at your own risk. If you want to, you know, get sent all the way back to level 10 and start over again, you can do that. Also, since the maze is moving, it's really hard to find a place that is able to no-clip through. But anyways, level 84 is a dangerous place. It constantly shifts around, its appearance and layout changes, and most people that get sent there will not survive because they just get lost in the maze and because they didn't watch this video because I just told you how to escape it. Walking through this maze is such a lonely and isolating feeling because you're essentially just trapped with your own thoughts in an ever-changing environment where nothing is solid. You know, you can't cling to one single thing. The maze is also massive, so there's no real way to see truly how big it is, which again makes you feel more isolated. The day-night cycle also makes it feel even stranger because the night seems to last forever, and that's when all the entities come out, so you're kind of just running around a maze, freaking out, wasting all your energy, and if you don't find a safe zone to chill in or something like that, you're going to be really tired, you're going to want to sit down, and if you do that, well, the entities are going to get you. So there's really no way to win. My biggest advice is to avoid the level and just not even risk coming here, unless you just for some reason are crazy. I don't know why you want to do that. I know some of y'all are though. But this maze is really like the one from Maze Runner, if you've ever read the books or seen the movies. It really has like a brain to it. It changes based on where you go and how you act. So if you can try to act like you're doing the right thing, maybe the maze will bend to your will and you'll be able to get out faster. There's really no ambience here either. It's just this really quiet and slight breeze environment where the leaves are shaking and the bushes are moving. It's all very strange to be inside of. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching to the end. If you want more of these types of vids, I upload three to four times a week, of course. And I also upload several times a month over on Spoogly, my third channel. And I have a podcast with my YouTube friends called the MBR Podcast. Tons of content with me going out there. If you want more videos from me, just check around. They're there, I promise. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Tell somebody you love them. And without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to end off the video here. Peace and love.